The Firefly was one of the few Allied tanks that the Germans learned to fear, from the hedgerows of Normandy, France, to the hills of Italy and the plains of the Netherlands. Among the most potent Allied conversions of the war, and certainly one of the deadliest versions of the Sherman, it was clever, albeit risky and improvised, move to try to keep up with the latest German tank developments. The basic M4 Sherman was almost exclusively used by the Allies at the time, from the US to the British, Canadian, ANZACS, Free Polish and Free French forces, and its limitations were well known prior to 1944. Want to know more? Hey guys, welcome to our channel Alpha Tanks, where we tell you about military tanks, from the most famous World War II battle tanks to the most advanced battle tanks at present. So stay with us till the end of this video so you don't miss out on any of this information. But before we proceed, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our amazing videos in the future, and let's get started. The Sherman Firefly was a British variant of the American Sherman tank that was equipped with the powerful British 17-pounder anti-tank gun as its main weapon during World War II. Designed as a soft gap until future British tank designs could be developed, the Sherman Firefly became the most common vehicle with the 17-pounder during the war. Despite the fact that the British expected their own new tank models to be developed soon, British Major George Brighty championed the already rejected idea of mounting the 17-pounder in the existing Sherman. He was able to get the concept accepted with the help of Lieutenant Colonel Witheridge despite official opposition. This proved advantageous because both the Challenger and Cromwell tank designs encountered difficulties and delays. The Firefly was put into production in early 1944 just in time to equip Field Marshal Montgomery's forces for the Normandy landings after the problem of getting the gun to fit in Sherman's turret was solved. It quickly gained popularity as the only British tank capable of defeating the Panther and Tiger tanks it encountered in Normandy at standard combat ranges. As a result, German tank and anti-tank gun crews were ordered to attack Fireflies first. Before production ended in 1945, between 2100 and 2200 were produced. The Ordnance quick-firing 17-pounder was the Sherman Firefly's primary armament. The 17-pounder, designed as the successor to the British QF 6-pounder, was the most powerful British tank gun of the war and one of the most powerful of any nationality, capable of penetrating more armor than the German Tiger Eyes 8.8cm KWK-36 or the Panther Tank's 7.5cm KWK-42. Using standard armor piercing, capped ballistic capped APCBC ammunition at a 30-degree angle, the Firefly 17-pounder was able to penetrate 140 millimeters of armor at 500 meters and 131 millimeters at 1,000 meters. On paper, armor-piercing discarding Sabot ammunition could penetrate 209 millimeters of armor at 500 meters and 192 millimeters at 1,000 meters at a 30-degree angle, defeating the armor of almost every German armored fighting vehicle at any likely range. However, early production APDS rounds lacked accuracy and the 50mm penetrator was less destructive after penetrating enemy tank armor than the 76.2 APDS ammunition in any case was scarce until late 1944. Despite its superior anti-tank capabilities, the Firefly was thought to be inferior to the regular Sherman against soft targets such as enemy infantry, buildings, and lightly armored vehicles. As the war in Europe drew to a close, the Allies encountered these more frequently than heavy German tanks. As a result, Allied tank units typically refused to switch entirely to Fireflies. A good HE shell was not available until late 1944, and even then it was not as effective as the standard Sherman 75mm HE shell. Another issue was that the powerful blast from the 17-pounder gun kicked up a lot of dirt and smoke, making it difficult for the gunner to observe the fall of the shell and order corrections. Because dirt and dust revealed the tank's location, Sherman Fireflies would have to move every few shots. The recoil and muzzle blast could be extremely jarring to Firefly crews, and the muzzle blast frequently resulted in night blindness. This was a common issue with any tank equipped with a high-velocity gun, including Panther and Tiger tanks. Because of the cramped nature of the turret, loading the large 17-pounder shell was difficult, so Fireflies had a lower rate of fire than regular M4 Shermans. Because the Firefly was a stopgap, these issues were never resolved as the Firefly was to be retired with the introduction of the new British tank designs. The standard .30-inch coaxial machine gun in the turret served as the Firefly's secondary armament. The hull-mounted machine gun had been removed to make room for more ammunition from the main gun. Many crews removed the top-mounted .5-caliber machine gun due to its awkward mounting and position near the commander, 
which limited a full 360-degree view when unbuttoned in battle. Some British Shermans were outfitted with rails on either side of the turret for two 60-pound high-explosive 3-inch rockets in 1945. The tanks of a single squadron of the 1st Coldstream Guards used these at the Rhine crossing. These tanks, dubbed Sherman Tulips, were regular Shermans and Fireflies. The rockets, which were accurate when launched from aircraft, were less accurate when launched from a tank because they were launched from a stationary point with little slipstream over the fins. Regardless, the RP-3 was effective when its 60-pound warhead struck the target. W.G.K. Kilborn, a Vickers engineer working for the Department of Tank Design at the time, was responsible for transforming the prototype into the tank that would serve British forces from D-Day forward. The lack of a functional recoil system for the 17-pounder was the first issue Kilborn had to address. The recoil of the blast caused the 17-pounder to travel 40 in back. This was too long for the Sherman turret. Kilborn addressed this issue by completely redesigning the recoil system rather than modifying it. The recoil cylinders were shortened to allow the turret to accept the gun and its recoil, and the new cylinders were placed on both sides of the gun to take advantage of the Sherman's turret's width rather than being hampered by its height. The gun breech was also rotated 90 degrees to allow loading from the side rather than the top. In British tanks, the radio was mounted in the back of the turret and had to be relocated. To house the radio, an armored box, a bustle, was attached to the back of the turret. A large hole in the back of the turret provided access. Kilbourne's next issue was that the gun cradle, the metal block on which the gun sits, had to be shortened in order for the gun to fit into the Firefly, making the gun itself unstable. Kilbourne designed a new barrel for the 17-pounder with a longer, untapered section at the base to help solve the stability issue. To house the new gun and accept the modified cradle, a new mantlet was designed. The modifications were extensive enough that 17-pounders intended for the Firefly had to be custom-built for it. Kilbourne had to deal with additional issues. The tank commander, gunner, and loader entered and exited the tank through a single hatch in the turret of the standard Sherman tank. However, the 17-pounder's larger breech and recoil system limited the loader's ability to quickly exit the tank if it was hit. As a result, a new hatch over the gunner's position was cut into the top of the turret. The final major modification was the removal of the hull gunner to make room for more 17-pounder ammunition, which was significantly longer than the 75mm shell and thus took up more space. The Firefly had no advantages in armor or mobility over a standard Sherman tank, though the gun mantlet was 13mm thicker. The nickname Firefly does not appear in any official wartime documents. From March 1944, it was occasionally used in unit-level brigade regiment war diaries, with another nickname being Mayfly. During the war, Shermans with 17-pounder guns were commonly referred to as 1C, 1C hybrid, or VC, depending on the vehicle's basic markings. A C at the end of the Roman numeral denoted a tank armed with a 17-pounder in British nomenclature. That's it for today, guys. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please click on the like button and share it with your friends and family. If you have any questions or comments, please share them with us in the comment space below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to see even more of our incredible videos. You can also check out our other videos that have been specially selected for you. We'll catch up in the next video.